Shalom Kodoshim. Hallelujah. Praise to the highest. Uzia Michael. Back with a prophetic word for you all. So I rolled up last night in the midnight hour. Did some warfare prayers. And after I got done praying, I laid down in bed and I had some visions immediately after laying down. Now when I was praying, I was praying against lust and for sexual purity. And one prayer point in particular that I really wanted to focus on, I loosed the fire of Yahuwah to burn out all unclean lust out of my life in the name of Yahushua. A certain scripture came to my mind when I was doing these prayer points. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 13 verse 14. And Elisha, or Elisha, whichever way you prefer to say it, had become sick with the sickness in which he died. And Yoash, the sovereign of Yasharal, came down to him and wept over his face and said, O oh my father, my father, the chariots of Yasharal and the horsemen. And Elisha said to him, Take a bow and some arrows. And he took a bow and some arrows. And he said to the king of Yasharal, Place your hand on the bow. So he placed his hand. And Elisha placed his hand on the hands of the king and said, Open the east window. And he opened it, and Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. Then he said, The arrow of deliverance of Yahuwah and the arrow of deliverance from Aaron. For you shall smite Aaron at Aphek until it is finished. Then he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said to the king of Yasharal, Strike the ground. And he struck three times and stopped. And the man of Elohim was wroth with him and said, You should have smitten five or six times. Then you would have smitten Aram till his utter destruction. But now you shall smite Aram only three times. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab came into the land in the spring of the year. In spiritual warfare, this scripture is a prime example of what it means to finish the battle. Elisha was mad at this man because he knocked the bow three times. When he said he should have did it five or six times, he would have finished the job. Some of us, including myself, have been right there at the edge of breakthrough. We are doing spiritual warfare, we're going in and then we get right to that point and just stop. Just like how the prophet was upset, the father's upset with this because he's waiting for us to finish the job. He wants us to wrestle until he give us that release. With this scripture in mind, when I had this specific prayer point, I knew that this was hitting the heart of the enemy. I knew that this was it. I started to follow up with more creative prayer points because I knew that this was doing damage. We loose fire and brimstone to destroy all unclean lust in our entire being in the name of Yahushua. I could feel in my ruach that this was doing damage. I had to keep going. We lose fire and hell mingled with blood to destroy all unclean lust and perversion in our entire being and on the outside of our lives in the name of Yahushua. At this point, my prayer partner had an even more creative idea. We lose fire and hell mingled with the blood of the lamb combined with concentrated acid to destroy all unclean lust in our entire being and on the outside of our lives in the name of Yahushua. Now at this point, I could just picture just how devastating this is, but something was just not right. The Ruach gave me an idea as well. Yahuwah, break the armor of all our enemies in the name of Yahushua. Now one last arrow, the arrow of deliverance. We lose fire in hell mingled with the blood of the lamb combined with concentrated acid to destroy all unclean lust and perversion in our entire beings and on the outside of our lives in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. So be it. So long story short, I got into bed after this prayer session and the vision that I saw immediately after laying down was I was in a boxing ring and then there was a referee getting ready to lift my hand up. Shortly after this, I saw another vision and what I saw was a woman's hand and I do believe it was her right hand and she had an engagement ring on her ring finger. I immediately knew what this meant when I saw it. I've been battling a certain devil, the incubus succubus, the spirit spouse, and I've been battling this demon for years now. Now we know that when people get engaged or when they get married, 
that the ring goes on the left hand. The devil is a liar and perverse, everything that the Most High intended. Now we know that rings are also pagan as well, but when I'm seeing this, I knew that this was a spirit spouse. I was getting ready to pray again, even though I was tired. But then I had another vision. In this vision, I was back in the boxing ring. I could see myself. But this time, the referee was holding my arm up. You know, like when a boxer wins a boxing match. Hallelujah. So I know when I did that prayer point that broke the armor and that one last final arrow, I felt the release. I just knew that there was something that went down in the spirit realm. I knew something had to fall. Yahuwah showed me through this vision that I got the victory this night. Hallelujah. So after having these visions, I dozed off and I had a couple dreams. I'm going to share one of the dreams with you all. In this dream, I stopped at a concession stand. I was in some type of pavilion. It was pretty lively. I grabbed a bunch of bags of popcorn and they were all wrapped up in these bigger plastic bags. Now, I don't know why I was grabbing these, but after this, I started running. In the dream, as I was running, I entered into this corridor. There was two people standing in the hallway, and as I approached them, I ran down the stairwell, and who I saw, it was an older black woman. She looked like she was at least about 45, maybe 50. The other person I saw was a well-known comedian from my hometown, Chicago, D. Ray Davis. So after running down the stairwell, I initially approached the woman first. After I stopped, D. Ray approached me and he said, where's my stuff? Then for no reason, he just shoved me into the wall, into the corner. I fell into this pile of stuff that was on the floor. Now you would think that most people, if this happened to them, they would have got up and tried to fight. But in this dream, I stood up and I gave him the bag with the most popcorn. D-Ray had this look on his face and he was silent. Then I approached the woman and I gave her a bag of popcorn. And then that was a dream. So I woke up from this dream and I started praying. And there was a word at the Father placed in my heart. Kepha Rishon. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 18 to 25, it is written, Servants, be subject to your masters with all reverence, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the crooked ones. For this is favor. If because of conscience toward Elohim anyone bears up any grief, suffering unrighteously. For what credit is there in enduring a beating when you sin? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure, this is favor with Elohim. But to this you were called, because Mashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who, being reviled, did not revile in return, suffering did not threaten, but committed to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his body on the timber, so that we, having died to sins, my live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed, for you were like sheep going astray, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Some of us may feel like they were being treated unfairly. We're doing the right thing, but then the people are returning evil for our good. We have to remember when we go through these situations that Yahuwah is judged and he sees all. Let's read verse 19 again. For this is favor. It because of conscience toward Elohim, anyone bears up under grief, suffering unrighteously. For what credit is there in enduring a beating when you sin? But if you suffer for doing good and you endure, this is favor with Elohim. For to this you were called, because Mashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5 verse 38 to the end. It is written, You heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the wicked. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. And he who wants to sue you and take away your inner garment, let him have your outer garment as well. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks of you. And from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. You heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, but rot those cursing you. Do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you, so that you become sons of your father in the Shamayim, 
because he makes his sun rise on the wicked and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those loving you, what reward have you? Are the tax collectors not doing the same too? And if you greet your brothers only, what do you do more? Are the tax collectors not doing so too? Therefore, be perfect as your father in the Shamayim is perfect. Hallelujah. -hoo. So in the dream, here's a man of status, D. Ray Davis, for no reason to shove me down on the ground. And I just got up and I gave him the biggest popcorn bag that I had. This is following the steps of Mashiach. But there's also something else that happens when we do this. Mishle. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 21. It is written, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you are heaping coals of fire on his head, and you will reward you. Some of us might be thinking, man, this is not fair. We have to sit there and take all this and allow them to do this to us. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 14 to 23. What then shall we say? Is there unrighteousness with the Lord him? Let it not be. For he says to Moshe, I shall favor whomever I favor, and I shall have compassion on whomever I have compassion. So then, it is not of him who is wanting, nor of him who is running, but of the Lord him who shows favor. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this same purpose I have raised you up to show my power in you and that my name be declared in all the earth. So then, he favors whom he wants, and he hardens whom he wants. Then you shall say to me, Why does he still find fault? For who has resisted his counsel? Well, who are you, old man, to talk back to a little hen? Shall that which is formed say to him who formed it, Why have you made me like this? Does not the potter have authority over the clay? From the same lump to make one vessel for value and another not for value. And if Elohim desiring to show wrath and to make his power known, with much patience tolerated the vessels of wrath, prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his esteem on vessels of compassion, which he had prepared beforehand for esteem. Some of us have been dealing with some very difficult people, but the Father placed it in my heart to let you know that he set this person against you for his esteem, for all his honor. He's putting us through this furnace of affliction so that we could be vessels of mercy, vessels of compassion, so that through these situations that we will be conformed into the image of his son. In the time that we live in that is so crazy, that is so bizarre, what the Father is trying to say, love your enemies. Praise Yahuwah. Thank you, Father, for this message. Yahuwah, I pray that this word will touch the heart of those who have been dealing with people who have hurt them, that neglected them, that rejected them. Even people that abused them, abused us for no reason at all. Yahuwah, we pray that you would give us the Ruach Shama, the Ruach of obedience, to obey the Torah of Mashiach and to love those who hurt us. Yahuwah, give us the Ruach Ahava, the Ruach of love. Father, perfect us in love. Your word says that perfect love drives out fear because fear involves torment. Those who have fear have not been perfected in love. We love you because you first loved us. Yahuwah, perfect us in love, Father. We pray that you would give us a heart to love even our enemies. In Yahushua's name. And here's another reminder for those who are battling witchcraft. We should not target our prayers against the people. Know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It is the powers behind the people. It's the devil that's pulling the strings and manipulating that person. So we should be praying for that person, just like Yahushua said. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, it is written, But I say to you, love your enemies, barat those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you, so that you become sons of your father in the Shamayim. I pray that this word encouraged and edified you all. Keep fighting the good fight. Shalom.